want us to invoke the Spirit of God to come and have his way in this service. Because everything that we do without the Spirit of God Amen. is a waste of time. Amen. John 4, 24 says, God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship him in spirit mm -hmm. and truth. So right now, let's just lift up and invite the Spirit of God, that Holy Spirit coming out of your way this morning. Let's begin to pray. Father God, in mighty name of Jesus, our Father and the God, Spirit of the living God, we invite you this morning to come and have your way this morning. Holy Spirit, you are welcome in this place. Holy Spirit, you are welcome in this place. Holy Spirit, you are welcome in this place. Holy Spirit, we say, come and have your way this morning. Come and have your way this morning. Spirit of the living God, come and have your way this morning, O God. Holy Spirit, come and have your way this morning. Come and take preeminence this morning. Come and be glorified this morning, O God. Holy Spirit, you are welcome in this place right now, O God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, have your way. Have your way. Have your way. Have your way, O God. Holy Spirit, have your way, O God. Have your way, O God. Have your way. Have your way, Holy God. Holy Spirit, have your way, O God. In the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Our Father and our God, we thank you this morning. We give you all the praise and all the glory. We know that you're in control. We ask, O God, Lord, you would take preeminence. Take absolute control. Bless your people. Meet each and every one of us at the very point of our needs. For we ask and pray in the name that's above every other name. Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I just want to thank God for each and every one of you. God help us. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This body just go ahead and worship the Lord this body. Let's just go ahead and give him all the praise. Let's go ahead and exalt Hallelujah. the name of the Lord. Amen, Father. Let's bless the name of the Hallelujah. Lord this body. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's give him all the praise this Hallelujah. morning. Hallelujah. He's worthy of our praise. Father, we worship you, Lord. Thank you, Father. We give you all the praise this morning. We give you all adoration this morning. Hallelujah, Father. I don't know about you. From January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November. Has God been good to you? Somebody just wave your hands on the Jesus this morning. Hallelujah. I give him all the praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. <laughs> Thank you, Father. You are worthy this morning. This is the Lord doing and it's marvelous in our sight. Amen. God has given us victory. And I decree this morning, as we have seen the first day in the 11th month of this year, we shall see the end of November in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Not only that, we shall see the beginning of December and we shall see the end of December in the name of Jesus. That is not enough. We shall all cross over to 2021. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Just lift up your holy hands this morning and begin to worship the Lord and give him all the praise. Hallelujah, Father. Bye. 
Now listen For all you've done in our lives hey! You took our darkness and gave us your life Everybody say
Wave your hands to the Lord in appreciation and say thank you, Lord. I don't know about you, you. 2020, you know, it has been God all through. It has been God all through. This song we're going to sing to praise the Lord says, Give thanks to the Lord, our God and King. His love endures forever. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
in the month of November, say, love and joy even in the month of December, love and joy as you cross to 2021, love and joy oh, Hallelujah.
joy overflow in my heart. Sing a new song to the Lord. Joy overflow, joy overflow in my heart. Sing a new song to the Lord. Now, 
If all you can do is to wave your hand. One more time. Father, we praise you. Hallelujah. We give you all the praise. Hallelujah. You alone are worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for who you are. Thank you, Jesus. We give you praise. Hallelujah, Father. Right now, we're going to stand in the gap. Hallelujah, Jesus. This is the time we stand in the gap and praying for the old wall. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I just want to let you know, Hallelujah. for those of you that have been trying to get onto our website and uh, through YouTube, we're having a few challenges, but you can see us right now live on Facebook. So go to Facebook and you that are on the prayer line, you can connect with us directly. God is in control. Today we're going to be praying. One thing that I think we need most at this time is the establishment of God's kingdom globally all over the world. In the book of Matthew chapter 6, verse 9 to 10, the famous prayer. Jesus was teaching his disciples how to pray. They went to Jesus. They didn't say, Jesus, teach us how to heal the sick. They said, Jesus, teach us how to pray. And Jesus said, in this manner, therefore, pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done or not as it is in heaven. How many of you know when God's kingdom is established upon this earth? There is no room for sickness. There's no room for cancer. There's no room for diabetics because in the kingdom of God, when we talk about the word kingdom, we are talking about king domain. A king that oversees a domain. And when we ask that God's kingdom be established upon this heart, guess what? You and I will live in perfect peace. Matthew 6.33 says, the Amplified Version says, but seek, aim, and strive after. First of all, his kingdom and his righteousness and his way of doing and being right. Then all these things taken together will be given unto thee besides. So the first prayer we want to pray this morning. For those of you that are online right now, you can join us. I want you to lift up your right hand and pray this prayer. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray that your kingdom we be established in our lives in the name of Jesus. God's kingdom needs to be established in your life first. You cannot give somebody what you don't have. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray that your kingdom will be established in our lives in the name of Jesus. Let's turn it to prayer. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, Father and God, we pray this morning, oh God. That your kingdom, your kingdom will be established in our lives, O oh God. That your kingdom will be established upon this earth, O oh God. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we pray, O oh God, that your kingdom will come. That your kingdom will come. That your kingdom will be established in our lives, in our family's life, in everybody's life, O oh God. Let your kingdom come. Lord, reign and have supremacy of our lives, O oh God. Let your kingdom come. In Jesus' mighty name we are praying. Amen, fire. Second prayer point we're going to pray. November. Today is the first of November. This is our month of grace. Someone say grace. This is our month of favor. Somebody say favor. And this is our month of mercy. Somebody say mercy. Somebody say triple blessing. This is my month of grace, favor, and mercy. Somebody say that. My month of what? Grace, favor, and mercy. Amen, somebody. Praise the Lord. I'm so excited. I just saw a sign on my iPad that we're live on YouTube right now. So we give God all the praise for that. For those of you that want to connect with us on YouTube, go there. When we talk about favor, favor is God's unusual lightning to us. When we talk about grace, grace is free and unmerited blessings of God. And when I speak about mercy, mercy is God not punishing us as we deserve it. Aren't you glad for the grace of God? Aren't you glad for the favor of God? And aren't you glad for the mercy of God? Second Peter chapter 1 verse 2 says, Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God 
and of Jesus our Lord. How many of you, someone say grace. How many of you want the multiplication of grace upon your life? Hallelujah. Hebrew chapter 4 verse 16 says, Therefore let us draw near with confidence, draw near with confidence to the throne of grace so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. People of God, just lift up your hand and join me. This is the last prayer right now. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus. I can hear you say, Father, in the name of Jesus. I take authority over this month of November and declare that this is the month that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in this month. This month shall favor me and I will receive abundant mercy this month in the name of Jesus. Say it again one more time. Father, in the name of Jesus, I take authority over this month. I declare that this is the month that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. This month shall favor me and I will receive Abundant message in this month in the name of Jesus. Turn it to prayer. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, uh, we decree and declare all over the world concerning this month, oh God. We take authority over this month and we declare that this month is the month that the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it, oh God. We pray in the name of Jesus that this month shall favor each and every one of us. We pray, oh God, that we will receive abundant mercy. This month, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Father, in the name of Jesus. The scripture confirms that you declare the end from the beginning. We pray this morning that your kingdom will be established in all our lives, oh God. And also we take authority over this month and declare that this is the month the Lord has made. And we will rejoice and be glad in it. This month shall favor you and me in the name of Jesus. I said, this one shall favor you and I in the name of Jesus. And we shall receive abundant mercy in Jesus' mighty name. And the people of God say, Amen. Somebody give Jesus a round of applause. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let's praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Good morning, people of God. Let us please stand for the reading of the word. The Bible reading this morning, for this morning's service, is taken from the book of 2 Kings, chapter 19, from verses 1 to 19. Again, 2 Kings, chapter 19, verses 1 to 19. When Hezekiah, King Hezekiah, heard their report, he tore his clothes and put on burlap and went into the temple of the Lord. And he sent Eliakim, the palace administrator, Shebna, the court secretary, and the leading priests, all dressed in burlap, to the prophet Isaiah, son of Amos. They told him, this is what King Hezekiah says. Today is a day of trouble, insults, and disgrace. It is like when a child is ready to be born, but the mother has no strength to de deliver the baby. But perhaps the Lord your God has heard the Assyrian chief of staff and sent by the king to defy the living God and will punish him for his words. Oh, pray for those of us who are left. After King Hezekiah's officials delivered the king's message to Isaiah, the prophet replied, Say to your master, this is what the Lord says. Do not be disturbed by this blasphemous speech against me from the Assyrian king's messengers. Listen, I myself will move against him, and the king will receive a message that he is needed at home, so he will return to his land, where I will have him killed with a sword. Meanwhile, the Assyrian chief of staff left Jerusalem and went to consult the king of Assyria, who had left Lachish and was attacking Libna. Soon afterward, King Shenacherib received word that King Tehaka of Ethiopia was leading an army to fight against him. Before leaving to meet the attack, he sent messengers back to Hezekiah in Jerusalem with this message. This message is for King Hezekiah of Judah. 
Don't let your God in whom you trust deceive you with promises that Jerusalem will not be captured by the king of Assyria. You know perfectly well that the kings of Assyria have done wh wherever they have gone. They have completely destroyed everyone who stood in their way. Why should you be any different? Have the gods of other nations rescued them? Such nations as Gozan, Haran, Resef, and the people of Eden who were in Tel Asar? My predecessors destroyed them all. What happened to the king of Amath and the king of Arpad? What happened to the kings of Seravain, Hina, and Erva? After Hezekiah received this letter from the messengers and read it, he went up to the Lord's temple and spread it out before the Lord. And Hezekiah prayed this prayer before the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord God of Israel, you are enthroned between the mighty cherubims. You alone are God of all the kingdoms of the earth. You alone created the heavens and the earth. Bend down, O oh Lord, and listen. Open your eyes, O oh Lord, and see. Listen to Sennacherib's words of defiance against the living God. It is true, Lord, that the kings of Assyria have destroyed all these nations, and they have thrown the gods of these nations into the fire and burned them. But of course, the Assyrians could not destroy them. They were not gods at all, only idols of wood and stone shaped by human hands. Now, O oh Lord our God, rescue us from this power. Then all the kingdoms of the earth will know that you alone, O oh Lord, are God. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. Please be seated. Hallelujah. The hymn for this morning is Great is Thy Faithfulness.
Aleluia, aleluia, aleluia. Great is thy faithfulness, O God. What a mighty God we serve. Shall we bow our heads down for prayer, please? Father, we thank you for the integrity and the authority in your word. The Bible says, at the entrance of your word, it giveth light and understanding to the simple. This morning, O oh God, I pray, Lord, that your word will have a free course among us. And that there will be none of man but all of you, O oh God. Lord, I pray this morning that you will speak through me. These people have not come to hear from my experience. The people all over the world have not come to hear my personal experience. But they have come to hear from the throne of grace this morning. Father, I pray, Lord, that you will meet each and every one of us at the very point of our needs. Let Christ be lifted up. The Bible says if Christ be lifted up, it will draw all men unto him. Anoint this clear lips and by to speak the undiluted word of God. Let it come with power and with clarity. Let it come like the knife of, of a surgeon. Dividing between spirit and soul. And judges the thought and the attitude of the heart. Father, we vow to give you all the praise and glory. For we ask and pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Once again, I want to thank God for each and every one of you that are in the house of God today. And I want to thank those of you especially that have allowed us into your homes through the multimedia platforms. I pray that this time God will bless you and then your needs will be met in the name of Jesus. This morning we are going to be concluding the series we started about three Sundays ago. Flourishing. In uncertain times. People of God, we are now at a point in this world where there's a lot of challenges. Some people cannot even wait for 2020 to be over. Because a lot of people have gone through a lot of challenges. Some are currently facing circumstances. But the challenge here this morning is that how do I flourish in circumstances that I'm not sure about? In a future that I'm not certain about? But one thing I want to tell you. A key text is found from the book of Psalm 46 verse 1. He says, God is our refuge and strength. Always ready to help in times of trouble. So we will not fear when earthquakes come and the mountains crumble into the sea. I love that. That key verse that God is my refuge and is my strength. Always ready to help in times of trouble. So we would not fear even when earthquake comes and mountains crumble into the sea. So what I did, I did some research into that psalm. Who wrote the psalm for the six? Verse one. And under what circumstances was this psalm written? Because I know something about the, the psalms. Psalms are expression of how you feel in different situations in your life. You begin to write a psalm. You write it and you thank God. You remember how God delivered you in that circumstances. And when I looked into the history of that psalm, I realized that this psalm was born out of the situation that was read to us by Minister Diane. A very mighty king in those days, a Syrian army, they were very deadly. They decided that they were coming to Jerusalem. They were going to lay siege, they were going to destroy. And they sent a letter, they sent a message to the king Hezekiah at that time. They sent him a note telling him, we're coming to take over. We're coming to kill all your people. And then he gave him examples from the text and began to say a lot of things. Wow, well, what do you do when you are in a circumstance, when you're in a situation that is beyond above your head? You know what the Bible says? Second Kings chapter 19, verse 14 to 15. After Ezekiah received the letter from the messengers and read it, he 
went up to the Lord temple. Look at what he did. When he received the bad news, the first thing he did, he sought God. Who do you go to when you receive a bad news from your doctor? Who do you run to when you have a situation that is beyond your control? Hezekiah is laying an example for you and I. The first thing he did, he took the letter. He read it. How many of us, many of times we receive letters, we know the content, we have an idea, we'll put it under the carpet. Thinking by putting it under the carpet, it will go away. The first thing he did was he read the letter. And he went on to the, to the lost temple. You know what this reminds me? He says the name of the Lord is a strong tower. And the righteous run into you. Whatever you find yourself in a situation that is beyond your own circumstances. Run into the house of God. God will save you. And you know what he did when he got to the temple? He spread it out before the Lord. He said God this is your problem. You got this. It's all about you God. And verse 15 says, and Ezekiah prayed this prayer. Someone said, somebody say, he prayed. He prayed this prayer before the Lord. Oh Lord, God of Israel, you are enthroned between the mighty cherubim. You alone are God of all the kingdoms of the earth. You alone created the heavens and the earth. What do you do? How do you flourish? In a certain time, the first thing Ezekiah did. You know what he did? God expects you and I to concentrate on prayer. The first seed that you're going to get this morning is learn to concentrate your prayer. When you concentrate, you have a laser focus. You zero in. You plug into God. Whatever the situation may be, learn to concentrate to God in the place of prayer. By the grace of God, I believe today is the 232nd day that we have been praying in this church every day since coronavirus. We believe in the power of prayer. There's nothing that God cannot do. When you pray, God will move. You must learn to rely on prayer. One of the songs says prayer is the key. Prayer, prayer is the master key. Jesus started with prayer and ended with prayer. You must learn to concentrate. Somebody say concentrate. You know one of my favorite scriptures in the Bible? is Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 to 7. I'm going to quote it my way. I love the scripture so much because the writer of the book of the Philippians is Paul and Paul was not in a five star hotel Paul was in prison he was locked up and Paul was able to tell the people out there rejoice in the Lord always and again I say rejoice he said let your moderation be known unto all men for the Lord is at hand he said be careful for nothing don't worry about anything instead pray about everything tell God what you need and thank you for all he has done. Then you will experience God's peace. Someone say God's peace. Which exceeds anything we can understand. And his peace will guide your heart and mind as you live in Christ Jesus. The fourth seed this morning. We're going to, this is the last series. Learn to concentrate on prayer. You know, I came across this very interesting illustration. The old lady and the 80s. It says there was a little old lady who would come out every morning on the steps of her front porch. Raise her hands. She would raise her hands to us to the sky and shout, praise the Lord. Well, one day, an 80s moved into the house next door. Over time, he became irritated at this old lady. So every morning, he would step out on his front porch and yell after her, there is no God, be quiet. The lady will say, praise the Lord. Time passes with the two of them kind on this way every day. Then one money in the middle of winter, the little old lady stepped out onto her front porch and shouted, praise the Lord. Lord, I have no food, I am hungry. Please provide for me, oh Lord. 
Lord, I need food. The next morning, she stepped onto our porch and there were two huge, huge bags of groceries sitting out there. Praise the Lord, she cried out. He has provided grocery for me. The ages, the neighbor jumped out. Out of the ages and shouted, there is no God. That's a lie. I bought those groceries for you. The little old lady threw her arms into the air and shouted, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. He has provided me with groceries and even made the devil to pay for it. People of God, there is power in prayer. When you pray, God moves on your behalf. So the four C is what? I can't hear you, church. The four C is what? Concentrate. You and I need to concentrate to God in the place of prayer. The second C, because of our time, let me tell you something about the human imagination. Our imagination is so powerful. It's a powerful tool that can create a desirable future. The scripture says that as a person thinks in his mind, so he is. Proverbs 23 verse 7. You can tell by looking at the prayer of Ezekiah. There were many thoughts. He must be a man that has a renewed mind. He was focused on the word of God. He knew who God is. Let's examine the prayer of Ezekiah. You know what Ezekiah said? 2 Kings 19, 16 to 19. He said, bend down, O Lord, and listen. Open your eyes, O Lord, and see. Listen to Sennacherib's words of defiance against the living God. You know what, what, what this reminds me of? It reminds me of David when David was going to attack uh, Goliath. He says, you come to, against me with spear and sword, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the living God of Israel that you have defied. Listen, Christian, you and I have weapons. God has not left us alone. Ezekiah says something in verse 17. It is true, Lord, that the kings of Assyria have destroyed all this nation. And they have thrown the gods of this nation into the fire and burned them. But of course, Assyrians could destroy them. They were not gods at all. He knew his God. Those people that were destroyed because their gods were not gods at all. Only idols of wood and stone shaped by human hands. And I said, now, O Lord our God, rescue us from his power. Then all the kingdoms of the earth would know that you alone are God. One of the songs that we sing in this church, we say, you are God from beginning to the end. There's no place for argument. You are God all by yourself. It's so evident that Ezekiah had a renewed mind. Romans chapter 12 verse 2 says, Do not be conformed to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what is God's will. It's good and pleasing and perfect will. If you go further, the New Living Translation says, Do not copy the behavior and the custom of this world. Let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing. What is the second C? God expects me to control my mind. Someone say, control my mind. The fourth C, God expects me to what? To concentrate on prayer. Second C, God expects me to what? To control my mind. What goes into your mind will affect you. I came across this illustration quickly. This man started to say, today I did something I'd never done before in my life. I ran out of gas. I was on my way to teach a vacation Bible school at a church about 35 minutes away. Had been going every morning this week. On Monday, I glanced at the gas gauge and said, oh, plenty of gas. On Tuesday, I looked at it again and said, oh, still plenty of gas. And then um, I never even thought about it for the rest of the week. Pretty embarrassing to have all to call someone to come and come up with five gallons of gas to get me, out, get me going again. But as I was sitting there by the side of the road with the other light blinking, waiting to be rescued, something occurred to me. He said, despite the fact that I have never done this before in my life, the fact is that running out of gas is one of the easiest things in the world to do. 
You know why? Because all you have to, all you have to do is stop thinking about it. And that's it. Just stop thinking about it. If you stop thinking about it, the only way you cannot run out of gas is never to go anywhere. But if you want to go to places and you never think about your gas, sooner or later, you run out of gas. And that brought him to that verse in the Bible, Romans 12, that says, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing, you may discern what is the will of God. And what is good and acceptable and perfect. So spiritually, it is very easy for us to run out of God's also. All it requires is that we stop thinking about it. Paul says that we should be renewing our minds. That's the same idea as keeping your gas tank full of gas. How do we renew our minds? Our minds are renewed as we spend time in the company of other believers. As we look at the word of God. As we, as we prod on the love and the good works of God. Our minds are renewed when we spend time reading and meditating on God's word. We keep us going just like milk keeps a baby growing. Our minds are renewed as we think on our great God as Savior. Jesus Christ, who should be at the center of our attention. So if you want to go anywhere spiritually, we must keep our gas tank full. And the moment we start thinking about it, the moment we start renewing it, we begin an emptying process and we're headed for trouble. God expects me to control my mind. And you have to renew your mind. The fourth C, God expects me to concentrate in a place of prayer. Second C, God expects me to control my mind. And the last C, which is what I'm going to close right now. Second Kings chapter 19, verse 35 to 36. It says, that night, you know, God, you know, how many of you know, I, you know, I get so inspired. Ezekiah knew God. He took the letter before God. This is not for me. This is what God, I don't know. Maybe somebody has sent you a letter of bad news. I want you to learn to take it to God in prayer. One of the songs that we love singing is this word of friend we have in Jesus. And he says something, he says, what a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. God expects me and I to concentrate on prayer. God expects us to control our mind. And when Ezekiah, the man of God said, thus says the Lord, he will not even come here. Jerusalem, he's going to get the news and he's going to run back. And before he comes, there's somebody who's going to assassinate him before he comes. And guess what? God watches over his word to bring to pass. In, in 2 Kings 19, 35 to 36, that night, someone say that night, the angel of the Lord went out to the Assyrian camp and killed 180,000 Assyrian soldiers. When God is fighting for you, Believe me. Somebody said, if God be for me, who can be against me? He can, then King Sennacherib of Assyria broke camp and returned to his own land. He went home to his capital, Nineveh, and stayed there. One day while he was worshipping in the temple of his god, Nishrash, his son, Adramalek and Sharazia killed him with their sword. His own children killed him. Then they escaped to the land of Ararat. And another son, Eshadan, became the next king of Assyria. You know one thing the Bible says, 1 Thessalonians 5, 17, 18. It says, constantly pray, but in everything, give thanks. Someone say, give thanks. For this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Jeremiah 1, 12 says, the Lord said to me, you sin correctly. For I'm watching to see that my word is fulfilled. Ezekiah learned something. He began to praise God. You and I must learn to count our blessings. God expects us to count our blessings. Look at it. How many of you know many started 2020 with us, but they're not ready to be found? Today is the first of November. And I'm so confident that the Lord that brought you to November will surely see you to the end of this year, even into 2021, in the name of Jesus. All you have to do is just keep looking unto Jesus. 
the author and the finisher of your faith. Who for the joy set before you endure the cross. Talking about counting our blessings. My wife and I went uh, to Costco to do some shopping. And uh, the line was humongous. But we had some bottles. I recycled bottles. And uh, some of the bottles weren't going in. So I went into the other side. Through the customer service. They said, listen, I'm having a problem. They said, sorry, there's nothing we can do to help you. They don't told me to go and start shopping. Instead of going out to go and meet my wife again. And stay on the line. Uh, they was allowed in. While I was walking, I saw a gentleman. He had Lysol. I said, excuse me, sir, where did you get the Lysol? He said, at the back, go quickly, he's running out. So I quickly, I ran. It was as if Lysol was gone. We haven't seen Lysol for the past four or five months. But you know, when I got in, when my wife came in, we were rejoicing and thanking God. People were looking at us. We were counting our blessings. God expects you and I to learn to count our blessings. The first C I told you is what? God expects me to concentrate on prayer. The second C I said, God expects me to what? To control my mind. And the last C, God expects me to count our blessings. In fact, you know, Minister Yomi, just get ready. I want you to, to sing that song, Count Your Blessings, but not now. I'm going to let you know. I want to conclude by sharing this illustration that my wife shared with me. I think she got it from WhatsApp. It was a story of a father and a daughter. They were heading home from a revival. The father insisted that the daughter should drive, even though she was a fairly new driver. While she was driving, a terrible storm broke. And the daughter had been a new driver. She got really scared of driving. She looked at her daddy. And asked if she should pull over so that daddy can continue to drive it. Her father said, no, baby. Just keep on driving. So she kept on driving. The storm got worse. She looked at her father and asked, her, daddy, are you sure you don't want me to pull over? Her father told her, keep driving, my daughter. But the storm got worse. Her daughter could barely see an inch in front of her face. Other cars started pulling over in the storm. Even big trucks started pulling over in the storm. She was scared. And looked over to her father again. And said, Daddy. And Daddy told her, keep on driving. They eventually made it through the storm. The daddy and I said to the daughter, baby, pull over now. She looked at her daddy and smiled. And told daddy, I know why you want me to pull over. And her father asked why. She said, you want me to thank God for bringing us through the storm. Her father said, yes. But there's another lesson that you should learn there. She said, I don't understand. And her father told her to get out of the car. And I will show you. She got out of the car. And her father told her to turn and around and look back and tell me what you see. She said, I see the storm behind us. The scripture says, and it came to pass. Every situation you and I are going through, even this COVID, has an expiry date. Just hold on to Jesus and be fully convicted that you shall conquer in the name of Jesus. Our Father said, when you're going through a storm, always keep going. Don't stop. Keep going. Keep pressing it. And at the end of it, give thanks all the glory. Amen. Let's just stand. Thank you, Minister Yomi.
Listen to this in this month of November. Are you ever boarding with a load of gear? Stars the cross seems heavy. You are called to be here. Count your many blessings, every doubt we fly. And you will get singing us a day. Everybody count your blessings. Don't forget, concentrate on prayer. Control your mind and count your blessings. I never like to close my message without giving people an opportunity to connect with God. So wherever you may be in any part of the world, just lift up your right hand and repeat after me. Say, dear God, I know I'm a sinner. I ask for your forgiveness. I believe Jesus Christ is your son. I believe that he died for my sin. And that you raised him to life. I want to trust him as my savior. And follow him as Lord. From this day forward. Guide my life. And help me to do your will. I pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. I want to say congratulations to you. And welcome to the family of God. You can reach us through our church website. Or send us an email. We will respond to you. You can give us a call. Like us on Facebook. Make your comments on Facebook. I think there is a live chat going on on the YouTube right now. We'll respond to you immediately. All we are very concerned is that you are connected with God. And remember that the best is yet to come. Father, we just thank you that you've helped us. Thank you for your people, Lord God. Whatever they are going through, help them to know that prayer works. And so they will concentrate on prayer. Help them to know that they need to have the mind of Christ, the mindset of Christ. To be confident that you that you have begun the good work will bring it to a perfect completion. Help us to appreciate you and count our many blessings that you have bestowed upon us. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Right now we're going to go to another segment of our service. This is a time we call giving back to God. Giving back to God. You know, a lot of people have, uh, uh, maybe I would say churches have missed uh, uh, they've abused financing in church and things like that. And so people are very wary. But this is one of the ways in which you and I can get blessed. The Bible says with a man who robbed God, he says, yet you have robbed me in tithes and in offering. He said, bring your tithes and offering to the house of God. He said, test me and I will open the windows of heaven and bless you so much. There will be enough room for you to accommodate it. This is the promise of God. You can pray for blessings, but you need to be faithful in the area of your giving. And so right now, wherever, whichever part of the wall you may be and you want to uh, be a blessing, please look at the screen and all the information to enable you to give is already there. Please do as God leads you and God will bless you as you do so. Those of you in the church, you can give your offering. There's an offering tree, a bag at the back there so you can do what you have to do. For those of you that want to give through uh, Zelle, our uh, email address is there, ihobcc9122 at gmail. Checks written to ihobcc, cash app. You know, every information you need is already there, and the Lord will bless you even as you do so. Shall we rejoice quickly as we take the offering? Offering. <laughs> Tambira Jehovah, Tambira Jehovah, Tambira Jehovah, Tambira Jehovah, Tambira Jehovah, Elele Tambira Jehovah, Iyelele 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 Lelele Iyelele Lelele Tambira Jehovah, Iyelele 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 Lelele Iyelele Elele Tambira Jehovah. Yeah. 
upon it. We pray, Lord, that you will rebuke the devourer for our sake. We pray for those that don't have understanding, you will give them insight. We pray for those that don't have a job and they would love to do it. Lord, you will make a way for them. Father, we bless you and we give you all the praise. In Jesus' name. And the people of God say, Amen. Amen.
continue to answer all our prayers in Jesus' mighty name. Today we want to celebrate everyone born in the month of November. I know the month is still very new. Today is the first day. Hallelujah. So we want to celebrate everyone that born in the month of November. We pray that you will live long and not die, but see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. We want to welcome everyone worshiping with us for the first time here in the church. welcome you and we hope to see more of you. Always remember this, the best is yet to come. God bless you all in Jesus' mighty name. For prayer requests and more information, you can visit our church website at ihobcc.org or dot com. Please send your prayer request via the church email Call us directly on the church phone number that we give this program. And remember, all things are possible to those who believe in God. Thanks and be blessed in Jesus' mighty name. Praise the Lord. Once again, we want to thank you for worshiping with us. And you that you have tuned in accidentally, it was ordained of God, we want to encourage you. We need your feedback, let us know. We believe in giving God uh, excellence in everything. Our God deserves the best. So please give us uh, your constructive feedback. Share with us on our Facebook page or the YouTube or send us email or call us, let us know. We believe our God deserves all the very best. We want to thank God for your life. Shall we all stand? We're going to just sing our, our song. We, we love this song. you helped us you started with us and we're bringing it to a close we pray concerning this week that your day will and purpose will be established even concerning the elections here in the united states let your day will and purpose prevail in the name of jesus bless people all over the world 
meet each and every one of them at the very point of their needs. Exceed their expectation. Do what only you can do in their lives, oh God. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit, rest and abide with each and every one of us now and forever, man. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our life and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Someone say, I love the Lord. Someone say, I love the Lord. Look at someone and point to them and say, I love you. And God bless you. Thank you very much. Don't forget to like us on Facebook. Subscribe. Thank you. And God bless you. Put your hands together for Jesus. Jesus.